Hello guys, my name is Tipun Woods and today I will start the subject algorithm and in this I will teach asymptotic notation. So as we know that in computer science there are many problems and in order to solve these problems we first have to create the algorithm for them and algorithm is nothing but the informal representation of these problems. Well, most of the time it happens that we have many algorithms for one problem so that's why we have to analyze it first and find that which algo is the best algo. To do this, we must consider two factors which are time complexity and space complexity. Well, it is obvious that to find that which algo is the best algo, we must look for that how much time that algo is taking to execute and how much space it requires. So right now we will talk about the time complexity, which is nothing but the compile time plus running time. Well, compile time is the time taken by the compiler or software you can say to compile the problem and run time is, is the time taken by the CPU, RAM, etc. which are the hardware. So as we go further, we can see that the analysis is of two types, which are posterior analysis, which is also known as the absolute analysis and a priori analysis, which is also known as the relative analysis. Well, the difference between these two is that in posteriori the analysis depends upon the language of the compiler in which it is made and the type of hardware and it is obvious that if we are considering each and every factor related to the analysis then we will get the exact answer and it should be noted that when we change the hardware or system you can say then we may get different answer for the same algo now if you look at the priori analysis then we will see that it is completely opposite to the posterior analysis it is independent of the language of the compiler and the type of hardware. And the main point of the priori analysis is that we calculate the approximate answer for the algo, which is independent of the hardware and the software. That's why it is same for all the system. So our main concern is a priori analysis, which is also known as the asymptotic notation. For the rough definition, you can see that we have to calculate the approximate answer for the algorithm. We use asymptotic notation for them. It should be noted that when we are solving the problem, you should keep that in mind that we don't bother about the constants. We don't write constant with asymptotic notation. We always ignore them. Now, if we look for the formal definition, we evaluate the performance of the algorithm in terms of input size. It should be noted that we don't measure the actual running time. We calculate that how does the time or space taken by the algorithm increases with the input size. Now, what does it mean? Let's take an example to understand it. Suppose there is a search problem for the sorted array with the help of linear and binary search. To understand that how the asymptotic notation will solve the above problem, let us say we run the linear search on the fast computer and binary search on the slow computer. For the small value of the input array, the fast computer may take less time, but only for the certain value of input. The binary search will definitely start taking less time as compared to the linear search even though the binary search is running on the slow computer. The reason is the order of growth of the binary search with respect to the input size is logarithmic while the order of growth of the linear search is linear. So the machine dependent constant can always be ignored after a certain value of input size. Now there are three types of asymptotic notation which are big O, big omega and theta. Well, you can say that big O is also known as the worst case, big omega is also known as the best case and theta is also known as the average case. Now, what do I mean when I say best, worst or average case? Well, I, I mean suppose there is a polynomial equation in which the variable which has the highest degree will take highest time to be executed. So that's why it is a worst case because that's the biggest value in whole polynomial equation and it would take larger time to get executed. Similarly, the variable which has the lowest degree, it will be the best case. So, suppose there is a condition in which both the worst case and the best case are equal, then we will say that is the average case. Now, if we look at them one by one, let's take the big O notation first. And as I told you guys before, that it is also known as the worst case. And if we look for the formal definition, then in this we calculate the upper bound on the running time of the algorithm. Here upper bound means the same, the highest degree of the variable. We can say that the fn is big O of gn 
and it can be written as fn equals to big O of gn. Now if we remove the sign of big O, then we will get fn is less than or equal to. We should keep that in mind that it is less than or equals to cgn, where c is the constant whose value is greater than 0. Now let's check an example to understand this. Suppose there is a polynomial equation fn equals to 9n cube plus 87n square and in this equation big O is n cube. Well, why? Because we look for the variable which has the highest power as I mentioned above. That variable will take the highest time to be executed and which is the worst case. It should be noted that while writing the notation we don't write constant with it. As we can see that in this equation there is a 9 with n cube but we don't write it with big O because we calculate we have to calculate we want to calculate the approximate answer not the exact answer therefore we always ignore constants there's one more thing about the big O that we will use it more than any other notation because we always want to find that what could the what could be the worst that can happen that's why we use it more well this is all about big O now let's talk about big omega which is also known as the best case you can say which is also known as the best case, You can, uh, as I told you guys before. Well, if we look for the formal definition, then in this we calculate the lower bound on the running time of the algorithm. Here the lower bound means the same, the lowest degree of the variable. We can say that the fn is big omega of gn and it can be written as fn is equals to big omega of gn. Now if we remove the sign of omega, then we will get the fn is greater than or equal to. Remember that greater than or equal to CGN, where C is nothing but the constant whose value is greater than zero. We will take the same example that we took for the big O, but the difference is in this the equation, the in this equation the big omega is n square, and the reason is we look for the lower bond. Now let's talk about theta, which is also known as the average case, and in this we calculate the tightest bond on the running time of the algorithm. It should be noted that if fn equals to theta of gn is true then it should be it should also be fn equals to big omega of gn and fn equals to big o of gn means we must satisfy these two conditions that are big o and big omega to prove theta that's why it lies between big omega and big o we use theta we use theta when for any input of algorithm it will take same time and in that case best case and the worst case will be same. Now you guys you guys may have doubt that what are what are these exactly and how can we use them in actual problem and what type of gate question can come related to asymptote notation. Well you don't have to worry about that because now in the next video we will talk about the remaining three notations and we will solve many problems in the which we will solve many problems that came in the previous year of gate exam. So thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.